The reason I'm here today is because I am not happy with the disparity of wealth. I'm not happy that the top 1% of society owns far more than the rest of the society put together. The inequality which is inherent in our corrupt system has to end. And all of the people that have come together here today, um, they see this. They all have their own personal reasons to be here. And for every person that you see here, you'll, ha you'll have a new reason for joining the Occupy Melbourne movement. Um, we, we, we support our brothers and sisters in America and hundreds and even thousands of other cities all over the world who are also occupying town squares and city squares and city streets because they can all see that the system is broken. They can all see that the greed and corruption that lines the pockets of the wealthy 1% at the expense of the poorest people in our society is a system which can no longer be accepted or tolerated in this, the 21st century. It has to change. Why are you here? People need to eat. <laughs> we have a, a protest going on uh, Occupy Melbourne, so people obviously need food. A lot of people don't know how to show their support, so they've been saying people need to eat. So all this is done with uh, donations. Everyone helping here is not affiliated with any different political party or anything. We're just people that wanted to help, and uh, this is how we're helping. <laughs> we're just cooking food, and it's pretty much been coming out almost about 14 hours of the day. We start at six and we went till midnight last night, even just down to tea and coffee and biscuits. We're having a constant stream of food getting donated from individuals and organizations. We even have kosher food uh, to support the uh, festival that's happening at the moment. This is an organic kitchen in an organic movement. It's a people's kitchen and uh, we're here to feed everyone basically as well. We're inviting people off the street we have a lot of homeless people come in. We're doing what we can, which is what we're all about, right? <laughs> my main reason to ha hop down and have a look was um, e my concerns over the escalating difference between the, the rich and the poor and the, um, the amount of money that's, that's distributed is, uh, is not quite right. I see the banks getting uh, you know the bank executives rolling out with their golden parachutes, and uh, and the uh, working people getting uh, just turfed out. What I think is going on here is hundreds and hundreds of awesome people getting together to create change. The spirit is rising, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop that. We need the people that are fence sitting at the moment to actually come down, have a look at what's going on, hear what everybody's got to say, make their own decisions and lend support to something that really, really needs our help. in the world economy fundamentally comes down to the fact that every single dollar in circulation is a form of debt or we have a debt-based monetary system. The solution is a debt-free money system and that can be instituted tomorrow if uh, the government would just pull its finger out. Uh, references, uh, go have a look at the crash course by Chris Martinson. Uh, he'll carefully illustrate the problems we face. Uh, the solutions, uh, the Secret of Oz by Bill Still, and I'll strongly suggest you have a look at uh, Max Kaiser 
zero hedge, the automatic earth, um, for all that monetary stuff. Uh, good luck. Under the trade union government now in Canberra, child poverty is the highest in the OECD. Pensioners are most impoverished in the Western world. 1.7 million Australians will not reach the age of 60 because of the ill stemming from poverty, and that is genocide, genocide by neglect. You're perpetrating a crime, a crime against humanity, by giving thieving politicians of all persuasions a mandate and a woman yet to continue their robbery of the elderly and the little children of the poor. Thank you very much. The ones that are fine, like for myself, who are living comfortably, um, I can't feel at peace on an everyday basis, knowing that so many are going with so much little money that they cannot spend it on even school clothes or books or things that are needed for the young ones to, to grow into a healthy mind and a, and a healthy life to represent our future generations. The way that the, the young are, are treated and the elderly, I find that quite disrespectful and they're not being heard. And this movement is fantastic. It's fantastic to see that United, um, they can hopefully make a move, uh, an improvement, and a change to a better world. And that's it. The banks and other financial institutions are able to capitalise their profits and socialise their losses. I would rather see them, well, socialise their profits or capitalise their losses. They can't have it both ways. At some point we're going to have to agree on the fact that we are sitting on a planet of finite resources and that it's unconscionable for one particular group of people to make an unlimited amount of wealth. So what do we do about it? Well, essentially, an Australian referendum on limiting the amount of money a singular corporation can take and ideally repealing the concept that a corporation is a human being because what we'll find as an outcome of corporatocracy is that human beings, the bottom rung, are being forgotten about. They're being impoverished, as we've heard. The elderly are being marginalised. And funding for essential services such as education uh, and, in a lot of cases, infrastructure to serve the educational needs and the medical needs of the community is basically forgotten as a result of um, unchecked corporate earnings. Now, if we put in a threshold limit on the top of it, so that money earned by a corporate or a, a corporate organisation um, is returned after a certain threshold into the bottom end of society, we'll actually move towards closing the equality gap as opposed to just letting unchecked capitalism reign free. Um, and this is a decision that can be made by the voting public, and it's what we need to get excited about. So, if I was to think one thing about occupying Wall Street, it's that we need to actually change something and not just yell about it. So that means opening a dialogue. So come down here, learn about it, express your own thoughts and then come to some sort of group cohesive decision that we can implement because we can, we've created the system so far and as a wise person said to me once, the system can't be torn down and it's never broken, it just is. It's its current best point and we can change it and mould it. So what that means is you need to be active and get up off your asses and come out and have a discussion. If you don't know about it, learn about it and we can make change for the better, be the change to quote the phrase. So, thanks very much. Hi, my name is Franca. I've come here uh, just after finishing work. Turning up to Occupy Melbourne feels like coming home. We really want the support of people to come in and Occupy Melbourne with us. It would be great to continue Occupy Melbourne because it really is like a second home to some people here and it's really a positive thing. I am mildly disgruntled. I'm Kath and I'm a revolutionary socialist. I'm here to protest the horrors and the crimes of capitalism, to protest the fact that we live in a world where we have enough resources, enough food, enough transporting technology to feed all of the world and yet still thousands of people die of starvation every day because a profit can't be made off it. I think we need to fight this. I'm here today because 
I don't see why you can't be productive and uh, protest at the same time. I'm a student, I'm doing my homework today, and I don't see why you can't be productive and uh, protest for something you believe in at the same time. We're not all homeless and we're not all hippies, um, but that doesn't mean we can't be here to support a great cause or something that needs to be said. I am mildly disgruntled. 